Welcome to Word Birds, where you'll hear content conversations directly from the flock. Join Christopher Willis in conversation with content experts and thought leaders as they chat about how to make the most out of your words in business. Here's your host, Chris. Hello and welcome to Word Birds, the show that's a birds of a feather conversation between people that care about words. Today on the show, we have Sherry McLeish. Sherry is the director of content strategy, the company called Merge. Merge is the blending of storytelling and technology to promote health, wealth, and happiness in the world. We're going to talk today about a couple things. One, we talk about content impact a lot. We tend to think about the business impact of content. Sherry's going to talk to us about taking the impact and moving it out to the end user, thinking beyond business value to where impact really lives. She's also going to tell us about what's necessary for somebody coming up from a writing role, an editorial role, to move into a content strategy role. So, hey, sit back. Let's get some insight from the flock. Hi, Sherry. Welcome to Word Birds. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Really excited for you to be here today. I think one of the things that I'm always fascinated with is that there's so many definitions for the word content strategist. And now as a director of content strategy at Merge, what does content strategy mean to you? Well, uh, thanks for the question. It is definitely the first and most challenging area to address with people and clients because it's such a broad area. Content can mean everything from editorial to some of the platforms and technology that you're using. And so I take a very broad view of content strategy that really looks at the life cycle of content from ideas and coming up with editorial all the way through producing it, distributing it, measuring it, understanding its success. So I know that you have a process, a checklist that you work with your clients on. You know, when you start working with somebody, how do you take them through this process? Sure. Yes, we actually have a pretty well-defined methodology grounded in best practices. We usually start with what we call discovery. Uh, and just like it sounds, it's around learning about a client, their environment, their customers, their pain points, their goals. Often I liken uh, the discovery conversations that we have up front to therapy, it's content therapy, where they can start to share with me, you know, what their day to day is like, uh, and what the demands are on their uh, roles and the content that they're looking to produce. I love that content therapy. That's fantastic. I mean, what's, what's most important when you work through that process in delivering, you know, impact in the content that's being created? Sure. So again, it really depends on what the the task at hand is. Um, I'll work on everything from large transformational projects where you're maybe instituting a a digital experience platform to smaller efforts such as uh, developing a campaign. So, you know, for both of those things, they do follow a very similar focus, and that is really on the audience, right? What does the end user need to do? And so often I really just start working backwards from Uh, who we're trying to get to understand what we're trying to convey to them and use that lens across all of the decisions and strategy that we're looking to really implement. So that's, I mean, that's for what I do, that's incredibly interesting because when I think about, and when I talk to my customers about content impact, generally what I'm talking about is business impact. So you're creating a piece of content for a purpose, whether it's to drive conversion or drive user adoption or increase customer satisfaction. We talk in terms of impact as a business result, something that somebody is measured on, something that somebody's bonus is tied to. You're taking this to a a place that, I mean, we don't talk about that much, which is the actual value to to the consumer, the person that reads the content. You're starting all the way at, I'd like somebody to be better. I'd like somebody to be able to be smarter, to be more literate on a topic, to be able to use something better and then working backwards. Do you think I'm getting that right? Uh, Yeah, certainly. I mean, we always take an audience first approach, but for me, it's a little even deeper than that. When we think outside of the business world to our day-to-day lives, we interact with content all the time, but it's not always from big brands. And so we see the disparity in the quality and accessibility and understandability of content in our daily lives. And so what I like to do when I work with clients is open the aperture to your point, right? What, what are we really trying to do? What's, what's meaningful, not just for your business and measures. And I, I think what I like to also suggest to folks, it's not just KPIs, right? Page views and things like that. 
but it's a, a broader measurement that you're looking to understand in terms of you know people's perception of your brand and things that are a little softer to measure. And so we start by looking broadly around you know, who is your audience? What are they trying to accomplish here? But then who are they, right? So the demographic data, a lot of the research that fuels content strategy is, you know, guided by stakeholder interviews, um, audience research, surveys, and, and other inputs that we can use to create what we call personas. I'm sure you're familiar with the term, sure. right? So <clears throat> using personas and journeys, what how those folks are going forward to achieve their goals, what a lot of organizations, I don't want to say they miss, but they forget about is what is the content that's going to be hitting these folks uh, wherever they are in their journey. And so we really look uh, here at Merge and certainly individually to bring together the audience needs and what they're doing and what would like them to do with getting uh, the right type of content that could be in the format, the channel, the messaging. So there's a variety of ways that we would be looking to make sure they can recognize, oh, this is for me, or this is helpful. And then again, enter that journey, follow the path to all the virtuous uh, business success that we're looking for, but also to the success of that individual as they're looking to accomplish a task or, you know, learn something. So, I mean, I think that you would agree then if you think out here at the consumer, if you start there, the business results are going to come. They're going to follow. If you're creating content that works with your audiences, then then all the things that you had intended from a business result, whether it's conversions or uh, customer satisfaction or NPS scores, all that's going to come with it if you started further out and created the content that is audience centric. Yeah. And uh, there's no accounting for taste, but I think we've seen this in our consumer lives, right? The quality rises to the top. I mean, I think Rotten Tomatoes is a good example of a reliable arbitrator. When you have people, the content is there, it's good, it's a compelling story, it's going to be highly rated and viewed. Uh, the same goes for business content. Uh, if it's useful solving or answering a question, then it's going to be used and it might be shared if you're lucky, right? It'll get some legs and, and move around to other people so that it gets even more exposure, which again, to your point, is a win for the business, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're now starting to uh, seed and get more visibility and usefulness for, for folks discovering it elsewhere. I mean, it's altruism in the enterprise content world, essentially. You're, you're thinking through the real needs, not just the business needs. I, I love that concept. Um, because I mean, in a world where you could get, I mean, whether through technology or manually, that type of feedback from your audiences at scale and use that to come back and define your strategy, you start to go from the strategy you create to the strategy you learn from your audiences. It goes from internal to audience defined. And I would think, I would think that if you have an audience defined content strategy, you're creating more valuable content, both to the user and the business. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I would agree with that. And I would also say, in addition to the audience, you know, we like to look, um, you know, one of the interesting things in my career is that I've always been at the forefront of emerging technology. So, you know, I don't want to date myself, but, you know, I was around for when we converted a lot of things from print to digital. Uh, and then we saw the advent of mobile and social. And now we're seeing the introduction of AI and big data and things like this. So we, we like to look outside at the market as well, right? So it's not just about, it's understanding the audience and their needs, but what is the new way that we might be able to deliver or present content that's been accelerated or imagined by some of the technology advances? I mean, it's it's been an exciting career to be on the content uh, side of things because at the end of the day, the message, again, and the value and the simplicity of what you're presenting is important, but a lot of the means by which you're able to deliver that or find people has changed dramatically. Right like you want people to care with Acrolinks. Absolutely. I mean, we're dealing in a world where there's, you know, AI and augmented reality and virtual reality, and there's a content need in all of that that I, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't have goggles to see these things, but I have to assume that there's a need for that. I think you have some experience in that area, right? I do. Yes, I have a little uh, firsthand experience working in, in some of these emerging areas um, in AI and looking at how we can, for example, what we call um, removing the human in the loop, right? So a lot of times processes, you know, if you want to schedule an appointment or do something, uh, you got to talk to somebody. So there's been a long march towards removing that human in the loop and letting systems talk mm -hmm. to one another. 
And, you know, when we look at AI and how do we get that language and knowledge of all the people talking to their devices into a place where we can then distill it back so that this greater comprehension on the consumer side, uh, all of those inputs still need guidance from the, the business side, right? So you, it's, the technology doesn't do it itself. And so what is interesting is to see the import of of language and the care that people are taking with with birds and how they're able to really just collect such volume. And and again, it's editorial skills, I think are really important right now to marry that with the technology so that we can start to bring these disciplines together. That's really when we're most effective is to think about, yeah, how do people consume and understand information? And then how does this technology automate it so that we're not, you know, because nobody has all the hundred scribes to be able to address everything. So we get scale through technology and you still need that editorial eye to ensure uh, it's understandable and accessible. So this is a guidance. So strategy, I think, is, is a great place to be when we uh, start looking at how do we go forward with those types of innovations. I mean, it has to be because there's so many channels now. And I mean, alignment matters. Brand, I mean, just take brand as a one thing that needs to be aligned across all of those channels. To your point, the editorial process, how do I ensure that I'm using the right clarity, consistency, and character across all of the delivery mechanisms that we use uh, and tweaking them for those audiences so that I'm, I'm creating something that resonates using the channels that we care about. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big and never ending challenge and it does start with the creation of a solid strategy and the ability to then manage and govern that strategy across the business. Yes, absolutely. And I, you know, I've always stood on the three pillars of people, process and technology. So uh, we don't want to let technology wag the dog. So a lot of times I like to look at at process, right. And that's a, a great place to start to find pain points and solve, right, by bringing in then the right sort of either knowledge roles or uh, technology to make improvements there that ultimately can help drive reuse. I'm a big fan of reusing content. So when you mentioned channels, um, strategy is really important to thinking about the ecosystem up front. Um, one of the pain points I see a lot of in clients is that uh, they're focused on you know email or CRM or they have a website and then they have social, uh, but they maybe don't have an effective upfront planning around first you know where we're going to place it. And so thinking about bundling content to your point editorially, you're having you know short accessible ways to get to the information, maybe longer depending on how somebody wants to access it or read it because what we don't have control over is how people are going to find and consume our content. We can only make it available as broadly and in the formats that we feel will be most relatable to the audience as we understand them. No, absolutely. I mean, I think for somebody getting into this space today, what what are the things that somebody should know that wants to move into content strategy that maybe is a is a writer in an organization has stepped into a, a marketing department or a technical content department and wants to move into this strategy role? What, what makes somebody successful? What do they need to know about? Yeah. So um, I don't know if I have all of these, these uh, attributes, but I certainly look for them in the people I hire. Um, so I think being really methodical and detail oriented remains at a, a top you know, need, right? You need to be able to consume a lot of information, analyze it and distill it. So the analysis and thinking uh, is going to really be important as well. One of the things that maybe I think would would really serve people well that young people might not always have coming up is that business experience. I have a little bit of a unique background in that I came up through sort of English and journalism, a more traditional editorial focused area, but then I was very interested in, in business and worked as an analyst. And so Having understanding of business and the language of business is really important, not just for content strategists, but for other specialty domains, because at the end of the day, you need to sell your ideas and talk to folks uh, the way they're comfortable, again, right, reaching your audience in a language and in a way that's going to resonate with them. And that, I think, really came through for me in my, you know, when I was an analyst at Forrester, and we like to distill things to uh, senior level understandability, right. which is very, very important. You can always get into the details, but if you lose them at the beginning, then you've lost it. So I would say business understanding, strong analytics, obviously editorial skills, writing, organization, and just, just being methodical and, and curious, I think is also uh, important to ask 
be able to ask questions and explore. Yeah, I only see this as an area that will continue to grow. In my opinion, content really is the the fuel that's running the enterprise right now. You can't do anything without it. Every touch point that we have starts with words, whether it's whether it's written or spoken or scripted, everything comes from a top level messaging document and moves its way down. And if we don't think through that process, you're damaging one of the most important assets, one of the most valuable assets that you have in your business. Um, so I think that this continues to grow. I think this role continues to become more important. I see a, I have a vision that at some point there is a C-level content owner across a business. It's still very siloed in most businesses, but there is a future state where somebody cares about everything in the organization that's written. And it doesn't exist today in many businesses, but it's going to. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of like chief experience officers emerging as a role, for example. And so I think it, it ties into that. There's enough need to be thoughtful and collaborative around content and experience so that it can be, you know, again, pulled off successfully. And there's a lot on the technology side as well. So I absolutely would agree with you. There's probably a, de- a need. And what we tend to see is organizations that are still in the, like a digital production manager or they have uh, marketing roles like a product manager that may be actually working in content, but they necessarily didn't come up through a content area. They might not have the exact same skill set. So um, everybody's familiar with content and certainly has a point of view, but there's definitely um, knowledge that's going to be making the strategy that you develop more you know, actionable, uh, right? We hear that word a lot. We want we want to be actionable. Right. Uh, it's been around for a while. And from the content side, uh, we really need to think about that early because people also want a return on investment. That's really what they're talking about when they're talking about actionable is how can we save money or make money? And so, you know, it's good to come in early and look at basic hygiene. You know, we see from an SEO perspective, right? There's some cleanup, writing to your point, meta descriptions, all the sort of fundamentals uh, starting there and seeing what kind of lift you can get and then evolving uh, to that place where you want to get, where you can be among the leaders or emerging or giving your audience type of content experience that they desire because maybe they're encountering it as a consumer. If you're in an industry that's not a consumer brand, for example. That's fantastic. So useful and so actionable to your point. If people are trying to find you and connect with you uh, following listening to this and realizing that you're amazing, um, do you have a LinkedIn or some way that people could contact you? Sure. Yes, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, people uh, certainly do message me. Uh, so feel free if you, if you had you know a question or wanted to you know further uh, talk about what we can help you with merge. I'd be happy to to hear from folks. Excellent, Sherry. Thanks for being on the show. I know people are going to find this very valuable. And I kind of think that we'll be back at some point to talk about your Forrester experience, because I bet there's a lot of really interesting things there. Thanks again for being on. All right. Thank you, Chris. Take care. Bye now. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to join us next time for more insights from people who love words. This podcast was brought to you by Acrolinks. Continue honing your enterprise content by checking out other episodes at acrolinks.com slash wordbirds. If you have questions or comments, feel free to get in touch with Chris and his team by sending a message to word.birds at acrolinks.com. That's all for now. See you next time.